what I remember first about the Smashing Pumpkins was um, I remember older, cooler kids having their T-shirts on. Um, and I remember there was a there was like this uh, this hip T-shirt record store in Montclair, New Jersey that had just like walls of T-shirts. And I remember I remember seeing Smashing Pumpkins. I remember one of my brother's friends had a Smashing Pumpkin shirt. And I remember the name being really striking to me. And I was like, that's a really great, you know, like when you just know something's great. I was like, that's a really great band name, you know, didn't know much about them. I think I had seen their name on, on posters for shows or, you know, I remember they did that Chili Peppers tour. Um, I had seen their name. They were in the ether. Um, I heard the rumblings. Um, but my first kind of, when I first I think when it first, like I had the Eureka light bulb moment was there was a show called 120 minutes. The video for today came on and I just saw the ice cream truck and Billy Corgan was driving the ice cream truck. And I was just like, I was, I was all in from that minute, minute on, you know, I was just kind of like captivated. They had me hook, line and sinker, you know, it was something, something about everything they did spoke to, me at some point in my life um but yeah that was that was my initial visibly seeing audibly hearing the smashing bogans well what's funny is my first like i had gone to local shows when i was younger um i never went to a giant rock concert or i never went to something in an arena like i'd always gone to there was like my brother would take me to local like vfw hall or there was a place called the pipeline in newark He would take me to stuff like that. I would tag along. I remember wanting to go to shows and never going to a big one until the Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness tour. I I started to think about almost everything a little differently after that night where I was like, I was like, man, like, I don't, I don't think there's maybe anything else I'd rather do in life than maybe do what he's doing or they're, they're doing, sorry. I want to do what they're doing. You know what I mean? I, I I had the sliver in my brain at that moment. Um, but yeah, that night they played for like two and a half hours, giant video screens and laser lights and the theatrics of it all the, you know, coming out to the melancholy and the infinite sadness piano score and crowd just erupting and the whole place singing every word to every song, not just the singles, just everybody in that room being invested. You know, I remember that and the energy in the room. Um, so I was so awestruck that they were playing Madison square garden, I think a day after two days after. And I was like, I gotta go again. You know, I was like, I gotta, they were playing two nights at Madison square garden. I was like, I need to go again. And I need to bring my brother. I remember I was like, at the time he was going to SVA in New York city. So he was kind of like super busy. He was, he was working full time. He went to school full time. Um, And I was like, Gerard, like, I remember coming home from the concert and being like, just talking about it all night. And like, I remember like going through the CD and being like, they played, they played this, but they did this. And like, this came on the screen. And I was like trying to explain what had happened. And he was just like, dude, he was like, he was like, man, I really want to see them. Like we should go together sometime. And I was like, you know what? They're playing Madison Square Garden two nights. I was like, we got to go. We got to go. I think my brother had that same kind of revelation I did that night when we saw, when we saw the Madison square garden show. Um, and I remember like nudging him and being like, this is what I want to do. And I was like, this is what we're going to do. I was like, and we're going to play this room. Yeah. And I remember like, yeah, I remember like him completely agreeing with me at the moment and being like, you're absolutely right. You know, like we had like this, we had this moment at Madison Square Garden where we were like, no, this is what we're going to do, you know? And I, that's something I, I still, I think back in and I'm just like, you know what I mean? It's just like, it was like a super cool moment. And we got to, we got to play Madison Square Garden in, was it 2008? I think we got to play there. And I remember my brother telling the story on stage. It was super cool. There was a club called Tramps in Manhattan. Me and a buddy of mine, we slept in front of the venue with about 50 or 60 other people to get a wristband to go see them at 
it was 300 capacity and it was the original four lineup. You know what I mean? And I vividly remember me and my buddy, Matt, um, we, yeah, we slept outside to get into that show. Um, not, not too long ago, I found a bootleg of it online and I was listening to it and I still remember like they opened that with, I am one. And I was just like, I remember this. I was in a jacket that was way too heavy to, because it was, I remember it being kind of cold outside and then I didn't want to like check my jacket because I wanted to get close to the barricade. And then like, so I had this heavy coat on. I remember I was right under Darcy. Um, that was one of the, that was one of the best shows I'd seen them. I remember they were just so, they looked like they were having a blast. Energy in the room was crazy. Um, they played a really long time and they played stuff that they normally didn't play. Um, and they played songs that ended up on Machina and then some of them that just became these mythical fan B-sides, you know what I mean? So yeah, the, the Arising Tour. I still, have, uh, I still have a poster that Billy signed for me. The deal with this is Siamese and melancholy, it's too, it's too close to call for me. But most of the time, I think I like melancholy more because of, I was into them when Siamese Dream was out, but I became a super fan when melancholy came out. Like I was a fan, fan, Siamese Dream. I thought they were the coolest band in the world. Like, but I think there was a switch that flipped in my head when, when I heard Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. So I'd, I'd say Melancholy is number one. Siamese is number two. And I think Machine is number three for me. I, I think that that album brings me back to a lot of cool memories. But then again, now that I'm talking about it, you know how, you know how I say Melancholy and Siamese are too close to call? Machine and Adore are too close to call for me. But I think I listened to Machine more. Um, Adore, Adore was an interesting era for them because I remember they did these small, smaller shows. Um, so that was a unique, um, opportunity to be able to see them in a smaller venue after like Melancholy was this gigantic, massive, like they, they were almost playing stadiums at that point. You know what I mean? But the thing with the door was, it was like a tonal shift where, more pianos, more electronics. What I think the pumpkins were always great at was soft to loud. You know what I mean? It'd be like, ding, like that part in Soma where it's like, bing, 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 boom, like where it's like getting hit with a Mack truck. Like those moments, um, I think those are in My Chemical Romance. Um, and even, even the softer moments, like you bring up Summertime. That's very much, that song's very much a love letter, I think, to the Smashing Pumpkins a little bit. Um, I remember, I remember with that song, I remember I, we were at Rob Cavallo's studio and I was just messing around on the guitar. I remember playing one of the parts, like one of the guitar parts I was playing and Ray was like, what are you playing? And I was like, it was like, dun, 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 which is, yeah, very Smashing Pumpkins. And he grabbed the guitar. And he started playing it and then he was like, roll. And you know, that's kind of how that song happened. I was just kind of messing around on a guitar, playing something very Smashing Pumpkins. And, you know, even the drum beat of that song is a love letter to them. You know, it's, it's a high five. That, that, that's us giving them a high five. Um, but yeah, the, the soft to loud, even if you listen to my bass lines, they're very Smashing Pumpkins because it's what I played along to, you know? As a teenager, I would I would put on those albums and I would just I would I would try to learn it by ear. You know, I didn't know notes. I still really don't know notes. <laughs> so I just kind of like I could just I hear something and I play it, you know. Um, so yeah, that's I think that's where that comes from. If you listen to my attack on the bass, it's very smashing pumpkins. Yeah, we've had conversations over the years. Um, he had come out. We had done a, a K Rock acoustic Christmas or something, and he was actually supposed to come out and sing a song with us, which I freaked out. I remember I was just like, "Oh my god! Like, are you kidding me?" Like, the idea came up, came up where they were like, "Oh, dude, Billy, Billy's gonna come out." You know, he's up for singing a song, but I remember what had happened was we didn't have time to rehearse it. We, we had toyed around with him doing, I think, sleep. Yeah, we wanted him to do sleep never came together but it was it was one of those 
one of those cool things where I was like, well, it almost happened, you know? And, and, and later on, I think we had done, we've done shows with them, but it was like, I mean, they were all great moments for me, you know, like just, just seeing our name next to their name on a poster. I'm, I'm never too jaded to, to admire that, you know, I'm never, it's not, that's not, that's not ever going to get old to me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always going to think that's cool. We have a lot of mutual friends, you know what I mean? Um, so it's just, they're, they're a great camp of people. Billy's always been super kind to us. Um, you know, getting to pick his brain once in a while is really cool. 